Hello everybody, this is David. It's another bear log video. Um, this time I'm going to go over a gray code counter. I'm going to explain it. We're going to get into, I'm going to show you the bear log code. There's actually two different ways. I, I'll show you how you can code it. We'll simulate both of those ways in Vivado and then we'll implement it on the basis three with some LEDs. We'll see a binary counter counting next to a gray code counter and you'll see the difference. So essentially, gray code counting is a, a way to count in binary. I'm just using three bits as an example. You can have as many bits as you want. Um, but it counts. So you see the, the, the binary counting. You know how we count in binary, right? From 0 to 7. Well, in gray code counting, only one bit changes value. So um, compared to binary where multiple bits change value. Just look at going from 1 to 2 in binary. This 1 has to become a 0 and this 0 has to become a 1. So we're using, we're switching two bits here. Now in gray code, you never have that. You only ever have one bit switching a value as you go through. And the reason why this is used is for um, main reasons. One of the main reasons is it's easier for state transition logic. You don't um, you don't have more bits switching at the same time and, and, and circuits, and, and there's also, I think, power involved in it as well. So what we're gonna do in Verilog is create a binary counter and then output the gray code equivalent to the binary. So let me take you to the code. So here's that gray code counter here in Vivado. It's the Verilog file. Uh, the module is called gray counter it brings in a clock we have a, a reset and then i'm outputting both the binary and the gray code value so we can view them side by side in simulation um, and we'll also be outputting them to the fpga as well so we can see them count on the leds so uh there's we need a binary counter so we're just using three bit binary counter a register right here Set equal to zero. Now, if we have a reset, of course, we'll set the binary counter to zero. Otherwise, every time the clock comes in, it will increment and it will just continue. It'll wrap around. So it's going to count from zero to seven and back around. And then the output wire of the binary counter is tied to the register that is the binary counter. Now, here's where there's two different ways we can do this. And I'll go ahead and go through this and this and simulate both ways. The one way is hard coding. The gray code register to binary counter value. So I create a register here. This is like register gray code. Um, and so always um, when we have a change in the binary counter, in the case of the binary counter, if if the binary counter is these values, then we'll set the register of the gray code equal to the gray code equivalents, just like we saw in, in the slide a minute ago. Now I went ahead and ran the simulation for this. And you can see it right here. The clock is in yellow at the top. Here's the uh, reset. And here's so here's the binary and here's the gray code. And I left it in the radix in decimals so you can see. But we can change it to binary. But you can see how it counts a little bit differently. Only one bit change. Um, let me take you to the simulation so you can see what I did. It's real simple simulation. Just have the registers to drive the inputs. Wires capture the outputs, uh, instantiate the device under test right here, uh, create a little clock, um, go through, have it start at reset. You saw in the simulation a release reset, and then it just counts, and then you have the gray code equivalent coming out down here. So now what I'm going to do is, is comment all of this stuff out and uncomment this. So there's actually a pretty neat algorithm for the gray code counter. You could hard code like this, but what if you're dealing with counters that are more than three bits or four bits? You're gonna have a huge case statement. It's much easier to do this down here because the gray code actually has a simple logic formula. So the gray code, the high order bit is always the same as the binary number. Now the next gray code value is the XOR of the, the top, well, the one above and then the one equal to. So this is bit one. We're going to XOR bit one of the binary with the next one up, 
the bit, the uh, binary two, the high order bit. And then for the zeroth gray code bit, same thing. We're going to XOR the binary counter bit of zero with the next one up, which is the binary counter one. And this will work for as many bits as you have. And this is a much easier way to uh, do that when you're dealing with more bits. So I'll go ahead and save that. I'm going to get rid of that simulation. I'm going to rerun the simulation and we'll see that it is exactly the same. It's running the simulation right now. Okay, here it is. So let me expand that out. And you can see, I don't need to change the colors, but you can see the same values. It's like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Well, this is the binary at the bottom. I switched it over. So here's the gray code 1, 3, 2, 6, 7, 5, 4, 0. And it'll just keep on going. So you can see that they both work. I'm going to keep the gray counter file the same. Uh, let me see if I can close this. No, I can't because. Okay, I closed the, closed the simulation. And we're going to leave the. We're going to leave this code. We're going to use this code. Uh, we're not going to use the simulation. So what I did so we can see the, the values change. I put this all in a top module. I created a one hertz generator like I've done before and to work with the gray counter. So here's the top module. Just simply we're bringing the 100 megahertz. 100 megahertz, it'll get converted to one hertz, which will feed the gray counter and we'll see the output of the binary and the gray code on leds on the basis three i just bring in here's the constraints file the 100 megahertz clock here's the binary values are going to be the far three buttons or three leds to the right i skip one and then the output for the gray code will be another three buttons so let me go ahead and uh, get the synthesis and implementation generate the bitstream program the board and then i'll show you it working on the board all right, here is the the binary counter is on the right of the basis three, and the gray code is on the left. And you can compare the three bits side by side. Uh, one note, I did go back in the constraint file. I forgot to bring in the button for the reset. I used button C. I brought that in from the master XDC, changed that name for the reset, and we we're good to go. So here you go. Uh, you can see the uh, gray code counter and binary counter on basis three. Thanks for watching.